William Connor was an American trader, interpreter, military scout, community leader, entrepreneur, and politician. Although Connor initially established himself as a fur trader on the Michigan and Indiana frontiers, his business interests later expanded to include ownership of Indiana farms, mills, distilleries, and mercantile shops. He was also a land speculator. Connor served the American forces in several capacities during the War of 1812, and as an interpreter and witness at several treaty negotiations. With Native American tribes that resulted their removal from Indiana and established the state's geographical boundaries. Connor founded Hamilton County, Indiana, and Noblesville, its seat of government. In addition, he established the nearby towns of Alexandria in Madison County and Strawtown in Hamilton County. Connor also served three non-consecutive terms as a state representative in the Indiana General Assembly between 1829 and 1837, and was a charter member of the Indiana Historical Society, established in 1830. Connor's brick home in Hamilton County has been restored and preserved as part of the Connor Prairie Interactive History Park, a living history museum in Fishers, Indiana, that is named for him and located on his former property. William Connor, the third son of Richard and Margaret Connor, was born on December 10, 1777. Richard Connor, born in Maryland, was a trader and tavern operator. Margaret Connor was a former white captive of the Shawnee, whom Richard ransomed for $200 and a promise to give their firstborn son to the tribe so that they could marry. Richard and Margaret Connor spent the early years of their marriage living among the Shawnee in Ohio, where their first son, James, was born in 1771 and delivered to the Shawnee as agreed. Ongoing conflicts along the frontier forced the Connor family to leave the area. They traveled with Moravian missionaries and their Delaware and Shawnee converts to Christianity. While still living in Ohio, James was ransomed from the Shawnee and returned to his parents. The Connor's second and third sons, John and William, were also born in Ohio. During the American Revolutionary War, the Connors joined a group of Moravians and their Native American followers in their British forced removal to what became the state of Michigan. The Moravian missionaries and their followers returned to Ohio, but the Connor family remained at what was later named Macomb County, Michigan. Before his death in 1807 at the age of 89, Richard established a successful trading post in Michigan and acquired more than 400 acres of land in the area. Although the Connor brothers received land from their father, by 1795 William was also trading with Native Americans around Saginaw Bay. From his arrival in what became central Indiana in 1800 to the end of his life in 1855, William Connor was actively involved in the area's settlement and development, including founding Hamilton County. Indiana, planting the town of Noblesville in 1823, and donating land in the new town to establish it as the county seat of government. Connor was also a trader, interpreter, and liaison on treaty negotiations with the Native Americans. Beginning in the 1820s, Connor used the wealth he had amassed from his ties to trading and the land session treaties with Native Americans to become a landowner and successful business entrepreneur during Indiana's pioneer era. After the American Revolutionary War, Connor joined his older brother, John, in what later became the state of Indiana. Arriving in 1800, they worked as agents for Angus McIntosh, a Canadian fur trader, and become officially licensed traders in 1801. The Connor brothers settled among the Delaware along the west fork of the White River in present-day central Indiana, and married the Delaware women. In 1802 William married Mekinese, the daughter of the Delaware chief Keithonand, also known as William Anderson. Chief Anderson was the namesake of present-day Anderson, Indiana. William and Mekinese Connor had six children and settled on 200 acres of prairie land along the White River, where Connor built a log cabin that doubled as their home and a trading post. He also engaged in farming. The property remained Connor's home for 35 years. His brother, John, who settled near Cedar Grove, a white settlement in Indiana's Whitewater Valley area in 1803, acted as an intermediary to facilitate the sale of fur pelts and skins that William sent him. John also supplied trade goods and liquor for his brother's trading post customers. In addition to operating a trading post, Connor and his business partner, William Marshall, profited from the land session treaties with the Native Americans and their removal from central Indiana. In 1811, during the War of 1812, Connor began serving in several capacities as a soldier, scout, interpreter, and spy. He also helped make sure that the Delaware remained loyal to the Americans. In addition, Connor accompanied William Henry Harrison, the governor of the Indiana Territory, 
to the Battle of the Mississippi, 1812 and was present at the Battle of the Thames in 1813. Connor was among those who helped identify the mutilated body of Tecumseh, who was killed in the battle. Connor continued to serve as an interpreter for the federal government during treaty negotiations after the war. The treaty ceded Native American lands to the federal government and removed the Native Americans living to reservation lands west of the Mississippi River. Connor was involved in eight treaty negotiations, including service as an interpreter and liaison during the Treaty of Street. Mary's negotiations in 1818. Under the terms of the treaty, the Delaware ceded their lands in central Indiana to the federal government in exchange for lands west of the Mississippi River, reimbursement for improvements made to their Indiana property, and annuity payments. The treaty was signed on October 3, 1818, and set the terms for the removal of the White River Delaware from Indiana, including Connor's wife, Mekinese, and their six children. Connor helped the treaty negotiators determine what the Native Americans would accept in exchange for their lands and urged the Native American leaders to agree to the treaty terms. In addition, Connor profited from the Native Americans' removal by providing them with supplies for their journey west. It is not known if Connor intended to move west with his Delaware family after the Treaty of St. Mary's was signed. As early as 1818 Connor had filed a petition to secure legal right to his land. In February 1820, six months before the Delaware removal from Indiana to reservation land west of the Mississippi River. Connor filed a petition that requested permission to remain on his land in Indiana and indicated that he would raise his Delaware family there, but the petition was tabled. As his family prepared to move west, Connor divided assets with Marshall, his business partner who decided to move west with the Delaware, and supplied his own family with horses and goods for the journey. Connor accompanied Mekinese and their six children on the first day of their journey before leaving them to continue their trek west with the Delaware. He left no record to explain his decision to remain in Indiana. Connor used the wealth he amassed from his trading post and payments he received from his government service to re-establish himself in the white community of Hamilton County, Indiana. Three months after his Delaware family's departure, Connor married 17-year-old Elizabeth Chapman, the stepdaughter of John Finch, a recent settler. Chapman was possibly the only young, eligible white woman in the area. William and Elizabeth Connor had 10 children over the next 25 years. One of his sons was Alexander H. Connor who was a lawyer and politician. Beginning in the 1820s, Connor was a leader of community building efforts in central Indiana and helped to facilitate its settlement. In 1822 Connor, his Delaware wife, Mekinese, and their heirs, were granted title in common to their Indiana homestead, although his Delaware wife and children no longer lived there. In 1823 Connor began the construction of a brick residence near the site of the family's log cabin on an estimated 1,000 acres of land. The new home, where he resided with his second wife, Elizabeth, and their children, overlooked the White River and became a gathering place for various activities of the growing community. The Connor home became a stopover for travelers, a mail stop, and a meeting place for the newly established Hamilton County government. With cash reserves from his earlier work as a trader and involvement in Native American treaty negotiations, Connor acquired multiple land holdings in central Indiana. He also became a land speculator, sometimes joining with others to acquire land that was subsequently sold at a high profit to new settlers. Connor and Josiah Polk platted Noblesville in 1823. The men also donated land in their new town for county government buildings that helped to secure its selection as the Hamilton County seat of government. Connor was also the founder of Strawtown, also in Hamilton County, and Alexandria in Madison County. In addition to his farming and livestock interests, Connor owned or invested in several stores, mills, and a distillery. Connor was involved in local and state politics. He supported the Whig Party's policies and his political friends such as Jonathan Jennings, James Noble, and James B. Ray, among others. Connor served as Hamilton County's first treasurer. He also served three non-consecutive terms in the Indiana General Assembly in 1829-1830, 1831-1832, and 1836-1837. His interest in politics were motivated by business interests. Connor lobbied in support of internal improvements, such as new roads or the authorization of other public works that would benefit his business ventures. Around 1834 Connor became an agent for the Lawrenceburg and Indianapolis Railroad. His other civic interests included service as an interpreter for treaty negotiations with the Miami people in 1826 and the Potawatomi in 1832, as well as a guide for the Indiana militia as it prepared to participate in the Black Hawk War. 
Connor also became a charter member of the Indiana Historical Society, established in 1830. In 1837, at 60 years old, Connor moved his family to Noblesville, where he continued to oversee his varied business and agricultural interests. By the time of the move, Connor owned about 4,000 acres of land in Hamilton County. In his later years Connor continued to acquire land, invest in new business ventures, and increase his personal wealth. He also became a local authority on the area's history, especially its frontier and pioneer eras, and was known for his knowledge of Native American life. Connor died on August 28, 1855, at the age of 77. He left a large estate, but no last will and testament. As a result, his heirs had to settle the issue of ownership of his land in the local courts, which disallowed Connor's Delaware heirs their claims to a share of his wealth. Connor was buried in Crownland Cemetery in Noblesville, Indiana. His widow, Elizabeth, moved to Indianapolis in 1864. She resided at 472 Northeast Street until her death in 1892. Little information has been reported about Connor's first wife, Mekinese, after she left Indiana in 1820. Connor's legacy is linked to the important trading relations that he and his brother, John, established with the Native Americans along the West Fork of the White River in the early 1800s. After living among the Delaware for nearly 20 years and serving as an agent, liaison, and interpreter, Connor made a personal fortune from this relationship that he expanded into further success as a landowner, merchant, and business entrepreneur. Connor's wealth and influence led to his role as a central Indiana community builder and founder of Hamilton County, Indiana. Connor and Josiah F. Polk platted the town of Noblesville in 1823 and helped establish it as the seat of Hamilton County government. Connor also founded Straw Town in Hamilton County and Alexandria in Madison County. In addition to his influence on the development of central Indiana, Connor's best known legacy is his restored former homestead in Hamilton County, Indiana. In 1823, Connor built a two-story federal-style brick house on the terrace edge of the West Fork of the White River, about four miles south of Noblesville, in Hamilton County, Indiana. It is believed to be one of the first brick buildings built in central Indiana. Seven of William and Elizabeth Connor's ten children were born in the home. In addition, the Connor House was used as the meeting place for the Hamilton County commissioners and other county officials, as well as a circuit court and a postal office during the county's early days. Connor lived in the house until 1837, but William and Elizabeth Connor's children and their families or their tenants continued to reside in the house until ownership passed outside the family in 1871. Indianapolis Pharmaceutical Executive Eli Lilly Jr. purchased the Connor home and farm in 1934 and immediately began work to stabilize and restore the severely deteriorated house. Local architect Robert Frost Daggett and contractor Charles Latham supervised the stabilization and restoration work, as well as the addition of a new, six-columned porch overlooking the White River. Lilly donated the house and farm to Earlham College in 1963 and the property became part of the Connor Prairie Interactive History Park. The Connor Home, which was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1980, has undergone subsequent restoration to enhance its representation of an 1820s era house and is open to Connor Prairie visitors. Thanks for watching.